Hey guys, so this video is going to be going over the urea cycle. And I'm going to be hitting just the major points of it and just exactly what you need to know. Um, you're not going to need to know structure or things like that, but you will need to know the enzymes and sort of the important steps of why this cycle is happening and what's involved with it. So before you really get into the cycle part itself, there's this uh, analogous activating step similar to how acetyl-CoA goes into the TCA cycle. But instead of acetyl-CoA, we're going to be using carbamoyl phosphate. Now the whole point of having carbamoyl phosphate is so that we can attach an ammonia group onto HCO3. And um, there's also ATP involved, but I'm not going to be drawing those in. Uh, they're not as important, but it's just being activated. So you pop on an ATP, and then you exchange it for this ammonia, and then you pop on another ATP um, just for the phosphate group to get the carbamoyl phosphate so it's active. And then the enzyme that's involved with this step is carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1. And the nice thing about all these enzymes for this cycle is that they're very simply named. Um, and if you can remember the compounds, you can generally figure out what enzyme you're dealing with. So this step is synthesizing a carbamoyl phosphate. So it's a carbamoyl phosphate synthetase. Pretty simple. And remember the difference between a synthetase and a synthase is just the use of ATP. Um, so if for some reason he does... We, you do get a question on whether or not ATP is involved. You can just remember it based off the name of the enzyme, synthetase. Now, this is just the activating step to get this carbamoyl phosphate. And, but this has, actually isn't part of the cycle, the cyclic part of it yet. The first cyclic part of it is actually ornithine going to citrulline. And another important thing to know about the cycle is where this is taking place inside the cell. So these two steps are taking place within the mitochondrial matrix. So this blue line here is going to be our mitochondrial membrane. And so I'll just label this mitochondria. And this will just be the cytosol. All right. And then this, the enzyme involved with this step, is also simply named ornithine transcarbamylase because... It's just taking this ornithine and adding on a carbamoyl phosphate group. And I will write in that carbamoyl phosphate is coming in to attach to the ornithine. Now that we've got this set up, and this is happening inside the mitochondria. Now it's going to be transported outside. So we're going to take this citrulline, and we're going to go into the cytosol here. And I'll just rewrite citrulline. And this, this starts the majority of our cycle. And, I'll, and ornithine is being pumped out of the mitochondrial membrane as well, but I'll get to that in a bit, just to have the arrows there. So now I'm just going to draw the steps of the cycle and without any other details, just so you get the names down, all right? So citrulline goes to arginosuccinate. Or succinate, if you like. And then arginosuccinate goes to arginine over this way. And finally, we go back, and arginine goes to ornithine. And then that gets pumped across back into the mitochondria to be sort of recarbamylated, as it were, to citrulline, and the whole cycle goes again. Now I'll get this better in frame there so you can see it. All right, now, so now that we've got this down, you've probably never had the urea cycle before, unlike the DCA cycle. A lot of people probably had that in undergrad. But trying to remember these compounds, um, it's, it's nice to have little tricks for them. So, for instance, like knowing that ornithology is actually the study of birds, and ornithine, that's actually um, a similar derivation. Um, they actually got ornithine from bird excrement, of all things. So ornithine, think birds. Um, and then citrulline over here. Citrulline comes from citrulus, which is for watermelons. Um, citrulus is watermelon in Latin. And that's where they derived citrulline from, was from a watermelon. Um, unfortunately for arginine and arginosuccinate, 
I couldn't find the derivation for the words. Um, I, <laughs> I mem memorized it myself. Um, for some reason, Arginino succinate reminds me of the Pokemon Articuno. I don't know why, it just does. Um, and I just make the association of ornithine, so I've got a bird and it eats a watermelon, and then that becomes a Pokemon. The, it's a bird Pokemon, uh, Articuno or Arginino succinate. And then I just remember arginine because we already had to memorize all the amino acids, and arginine is already in this compound, so it's not too hard to remember. So those are all the compounds that you need to know that are involved with the cycle. And then I'm just going to add in the, the side reactions that are happening of things going in and coming out. So for citrulline to arginine succinate, we, we are including an aspartate group. And this is important to know because this is how the TCA cycle is involved. So in the TCA cycle, you end up with oxaloacetate before it gets another acetyl-CoA in there. And that, that oxaloacetate can be actually turned into an aspartate and go into this cycle instead of going through the TCA cycle again. And also important to the TCA cycle is that this step, you can get a fumarate, which is just directly part of the TCA cycle. And then that can just go to malate, and then it just goes around again. But you can also just go from fumarate to malate, and you can end up with your aspartate going through the cycle. And so you can have its own sort of interconnected cycle between those two. And then finally, the most important part of this whole thing, the whole point of this, is getting a urea. And urea, um, we get this ammonia here, and then it goes through here, and it comes onto the urea, and it gets excreted in urine. Um, and so that's the whole point of the cycle, is to get that urea and create that urea so you can get rid of it as a metabolite. Now, finally, I'll just write in the enzymes for all these steps, and the, they're all pretty simply named, so they're not too hard to remember. So when we're forming arginine We've got arginino-succinase, arginino-succinate synthetase, excuse me. Synthetase. And that's this step. And then again, we're going from arginino-succinate to arginine, and that's cleaving off a fumarate, so it's just an arginino-succinate lyase. And finally, going from arginine to ornithine, it's just an arginase. Really simple. Now, so these are all the enzymes for all the steps. And it's important to know the enzymes because of the defects and deficiencies that are involved with all of them. So urea cycle is really important to get rid of ammonia. You need it to get rid of ammonia. And having a defect in any of the enzymes involved will end up usually with a buildup of ammonia or even a buildup of um, a lack of urea. So you can have a defect at the carbamoyl phosphate synthetase here or at the ornithine transcarbamylase here. And these two steps are going to result in um, hyperammonemia because you have a, either a buildup of carbamoyl phosphate or a buildup of ornithine and you're not getting these reactions to happen and it's going to end up with more of the ammonia here or the ammonium. It's transported around as ammonium in the blood. Um, and you just you don't want that to happen because when you've got too much ammonia in your system, basically your body doesn't know how to handle it, and you create a positive feedback loop. So how your body deals with ammonia is it creates more ammonia. And it's a really, um, and then that ends up being trans transferred over to alpha ketoglutarate and to glutamate to make glutamine. So it's that's how they were taking this this NH three here, and they're just adding it onto your amino acids. So, but that's going to deplete your supply of those, of both glutamate and alpha ketoglutarate. So you don't have those to be, say, in the TCA cycle, which is going to decrease your metabolism, and you're going to end up with not enough ATP, and that's bad. So that's, that's why we don't want these sorts of um, defects with our enzymes. And the same goes with all these other enzymes, we, other defects in the urea cycle. So you can have defects here, and it's really straightforward in terms of what builds up. So if you have, if you have a defect in arginine succinate synthetase, you'll have a buildup of citrulline, and you'll have a buildup of ammonia too because it's sort of backing up the cycle. You have a defect in ar arginine succinate lyase, you're going to have a buildup of arginine succinate and a buildup of citrulline. 
right, if you have a buildup, if you have a defect in arginase, you'll have a buildup of arginine. And it's important to realize that when we're talking about a defect or a deficiency, we're not talking about no enzyme at all in your, in your body. We're just talking about either a not enough enzyme or a defective enzyme that only has some of its functionality remaining. So that's all of the, the urea cycle here. And I can write in finally at the end here just to remember that it's also connected to the TCA cycle pretty in depth. So this aspartate here, I can just write TCA, and it's coming in from the TCA into the aspartate. So it's important to have all of these in mind when you're trying to understand the urea cycle and why it's important and what's going on, and just to have in your head exactly what the important steps are. You don't need to know structures at all, but you do need to know everything basically that's on this page. Um, so I hope that's, that's helping you guys in understanding the cycle and why it's important. Um, my name is John Lukoski, and I wish you all way more than luck.